Today we are going to be replacing the air filter on the Honda CBR 650R. Let's get started. First step is to remove both seats here. Unlock the seat, that rear seat. That. And then remove the bolts here for the seat. Let's just lift up and back. A good habit is to put the uh, bolts back where you found them. Uh, the tank pivots over this bolt here so you can lift the tank up like this while it's still stuck here. I noticed something with my bolt here is that it's, uh, it looks like the previous owner has stripped the bolt. You can see on this side there is no locking nut here and the bolt is just inside there. So I'm going to run away to the uh, local hardware store and get a replacement bolt for this later. So I've already done the other side, but the next step is to remove these side fairings. And uh, I'll show you before I take this off how the side fairing actually is constructed underneath. So if we look at the side that I already removed, you can see that it's um, basically stuck with some kind of Velcro here. And here is a rubber grommet, which this, which this pin goes into. On top of that, you have this part and this part that go in separately. So it's important that you don't just try to pull this out. You can see that this part holder right here and this bottom part goes in here. You can see like that. Goes in here. So when you're removing this back part, this part is going to be easy to remove, but this part you first want to lift Press in, lift up, and pull out. So start by undoing this bolt here. All right, so I got the bolt here. This is a great place to temporarily store bolts. You don't need them. So just get your hand in here and pull. There. It's not harder than that but now you need to be careful don't keep pulling once you have this loose pull in slightly up and out next is to undo these two bolts to get this tank fairing out now before you start pulling and all kinds of things on this fairing it's stuck in a few different ways so one was these two bolts and then there is also a pin just like in the side panels that gets stuck into this part and under here is kind of like a plastic hook that goes underneath the tank I'm not sure you'll be able to see it um, but I'll try to show you when I get it off. So the first thing you do is pull this slightly down and out. Same thing here. You see, if I try to pull this, it doesn't move. But if I move it down slightly, there. I'll take it. All right. So as you can see, there are these pins here and here. They both go in here and there, respectively. Then you have the same Velcro mechanics in four different places. And like I said, right here in the edge, there is a hook-like plastic part. So don't try to just keep pulling it because this will break. It basically hooks underneath the tank in this area here. So you want to be pushing this slightly forward and lifting it out. Next is to undo this tank bolt right here and the same one on the other side. They're both 10 millimeters. All 
right, the tank bolts are removed, but I forgot to tell you, you need to remove this part as well before you can start lifting the tank. It's only held on by um, two push pins here and here. So all you do is take your Allen key or whatever you have, just push this down and push it down that easy. And now you'll just be able to lift this up here. There you go. The anything in the way here, I should be able to just lift this tank up. So you can get something to just prop this tank up and you could get access to this uh, air box. like this um, but and, and with this prop like this you can get access to all the bolts for the air box but I need to change out this tank bolt anyway so I'm gonna just remove the tank so to remove the tank you need to remove um, these hoses here and this one over here so what you do is you just lift this lightly so you remove the pressure from this bolt and you just pull it out. It doesn't have any tre uh, threading on this part, only on the end. When you can see this part is completely destroyed. Um, so yeah, I'm going to see if I can find a replacement for this. Otherwise I'll put this in, in while I'm waiting for a new part. So now will be a great time to get some paper or a cloth or whatever you have and just keep it underneath here since we are going to be removing fuel lines you're going to get some drops of fuel in this area the way you remove this green clip here is by pushing on those ends there which lifts up the clips so they don't um, interfere anymore. So I'm going to see if you can get a view of here. So I'm just taking my hand here. I'm pushing these clips with my thumb and finger and moving it down like this. There you can see. Now I moved it down. And then all you do is just start wiggling this out there and the fuel comes out of this line so that's the first one done needle nose pliers and just Get this clip here, move it out slightly, that's all you need to do, not more than that. You can do it more than that, but it's not necessary. So if this is stuck really hard, just keep wiggling it from side to side. Try to have a quite a loose grip first, and eventually this will happen. Just like so. And there we go. That's that hose, and the same way, just wiggling and twisting is the way to go. We've gotten all the hoses off now. There's an electric connector down here, which needs to be disconnected. There. It's one of these push connectors, so you push this end here to lift the locking mechanism up and you pull out. There should be nothing holding the tank here anymore. So what I like to do with tanks generally when I've been doing it on other bikes is to just have them rest against something like this. That way you don't risk having any of these uh, pins getting uh, bent. Just place it under here just in case something grips. So 
So working on your own bike in this kind of way is a great way to get to know it as well. Knowing um, what has been done to it before. Um, and just generally knowing the health of different things. Like uh, by doing this uh, service uh, part, you will be able to see the top part of the uh, rear shock. You can see in what kind of shape that is. If you want, you could spray some kind of silicone lube over this. Um, you can look over the electrical wiring. There's a lot of things that you can see and get to know by doing these kind of things. And it is really easy. So this here is the airbox itself. And apart from um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven um, screws, it's also held into place. Oh, eight, sorry. There is one hiding under there. Um, apart from those, it's also held on by this hose here, this one here, uh, this electrical connector here, this one, and even this one. So we're going to start by removing all the connectors and hoses. Alright, so a good tip here is that this brown wire here is held into place here by a small pin. All you need to do is to pinch this with your fingers and push it down and you'll have a lot more room to work with these wires now. And actually you don't even need to disconnect this brown wire here. You just need to get this this thing off of this black mounting point. All you do is pull this one outwards. So now we have disconnected this wire, this one here. We actually not disconnected any wires, we just removed them from their mounting points. And we have here one more of these kind of push and lift style. As you just push hard on this and pull it out. And there we go. There, I just moved that out of the way. And now we can actually start removing the top of the air box. These hoses we can actually let stay here for now. I have just removed these clips uh, or moved them to see if we actually need actually need to remove them or if we can let them be there. So on the outside perimeter you have about eight of the you have eight of these um, Phillips head uh, or sorry uh, these screws and there is supposed to be one in here I think so nine but I can't see that there is any any bolt in there so I'll have to look closer at that. Hiding in here, behind all these wires. Now, two for two, there shouldn't be anything holding the airbox in place. Um, yep, nothing except these hose. uh, hoses. Sorry. Alright, looks like we're gonna get, need to get a flathead screwdriver here. Put it here and start in different places. Just try to move it up like this. There's nothing fancy, no special techniques, just prying one bit at a time. And you can be patient, you're gonna get it out just like this. And now we should be able to back it out and there. Perfect. This part off too. So in the same way we try to get under here and start lifting. There. 
cut this part off. Nope, nothing. There we go. Throttle bodies, um, do not turn the throttle because they will open uh, and you don't want to risk anything weird getting in here. Move these hoses out of the way. These two bolts here and I think this one, no sorry not this one, just these two bolts here. Now this should just pop out like that and that looks absolutely uh, disgusting. So here there's even some mosquitoes it looks like. There's a, there's a rock there. It looks like it hasn't had anything ever done to it since well since it came out of the factory. This is terrible. Um, yeah. The difference is uh, absolutely insane. Uh, you can see how disgusting that other filter is and how beautiful this looks. We don't want them. So here you have this beautiful new filter compared to this. Uh, yeah. And it's pretty straightforward to get this back there. So getting the other, this nice new air filter, air filter into place is nothing complicated. Uh, you can see the Honda text, so uh, if you can read it, it's the right way. Uh, it's not more complicated than that. And it just slots in. Uh, we take the screws here. And just lightly screw it in there and lightly screw it in here. And then tighten a bit on both sides there and there. So now you have the new air filter um, installed. And now, before I do anything, I'm just going to put this back into place. Like so. so let's start by uh, reattaching a few of these Uh, it's a lot easier to get the hoses back on compared to getting them off in the first place. You can even do this pin by hand. And I can probably do this. Oh, hoses are connected. Take this wire connector back in its place and this part goes up into this connector there okay. so just uh, get it at an angle there you go and now you have all the wires and hoses back connected to the airbox and let's screw these guys back in very mm. I try to go as opposite as possible there shouldn't be much of a problem and uh, tighten each of these also keep going opposite. Uh, when it's plastic it doesn't matter as much. Metal cases you want to do in a very specific star-like pattern 
which keeps the tension on the surfaces quite even, uh, reduces the risk of bending. Uh, but in this case, it's just it's plastic, and the mating surfaces are going to bend uh, and be tight and sealing anyway. Connected again. I've left this one out because I'm going to take it with me to the local hardware store to see if I can get a replacement for this one uh, in here. All right, welcome back. I went to the local hardware store and I think I managed to find some replacement screws. So here are the original ones and here is my replacement. It should work just fine. So you can go into this place called motorcyclesparparts.eu. You can find the diagrams for the different parts of your bike and you can find the OAM um, parts. And when you look at the OAM parts, it'll say for example, this one is a screw tapping 5x20, this is a 5x25, so you can find the dimensions of the screws you need. So I'm using the new screw uh, in this place here. There, super tight and good. There is no um, gap or anything in the air box. Perfect. So we'll just drop that screw in there and use this longer screwdriver here uh, I'm not sure you can actually see in there it's very dark but that screw is now in place as well the whole airbox assembly is now complete now onto the net next matter at hand the stripped tank bolt as you can see it goes in here fits nicely and I did find a few replacements for this they're a bit longer but if you look at this one, for example, this should work um, perfectly fine. So now it's time to put the bike back together and let's start by putting the tank in place here. So to do this, I'm probably going to let the tank move forward a bit here like so and then I'll be able to find the hole properly like this and there as you can see uh, this new tank bolt is sitting out here We'll see if I can actually use this or if I have to change it in some way. Alright, so there we go. As you can see, it pivots just fine over this. Uh, and that's because of the rubber grommets. It can move a bit side to side. Uh, so I'm really happy with this uh, solution. And now let's get to connecting all the hoses and cables again like so so the first is this connector here just goes in like that it's the green hose so the green hose goes over here and just slide it up that's all you need to do and this green thing is a locking mechanism. You just need to squeeze it in as far as you could. And now you it's basically locked in. So remember the fat hose went over this one here. But I'm not going to put that one on just yet because this one is longer and easier to work with and this one now There we go. 
and this hose didn't have any kind of holding thing lower down the tank now before we do anything else it can also be a good idea because now we have connected all the connectors again there's nothing that should be loose so just turn the ignition and turn this on and there you can hear that you heard the fuel uh, pump priming and there are no error messages displayed um, and that looks great uh, actually um, there are no more parts that are loose and there should not be any problem in starting the bike now so let's do it <laughs> take the time to check that everything is fine now uh, we have no fuel leaks nothing is wet nothing is dripping and everything is where it should be great so now once again we're going to be getting the screw back in here and it can require a bit of matching up but it's very very easy, just lift the tank up slightly there. so now we're going to be putting this back over the ignition and remember uh, this has two push pins on either side so just slide it over like this under the gas tank there's a small flap so it goes like there and this is kind of like a rubbery seal so you just push it gently over push it nicely so here you get a nice seal over the ignition so you need to push this as far down as possible like this and then as you can see now i'm going to push from the underside and you heard that click and now you can see that it's flush and this isn't gonna move we're gonna use my favorite spot for storing bolts back of the bike so here you go with the start by bringing it up here and the hook goes first like this It's as easy as that. And there you have this front panel now also fixed. Uh, next thing we're going to do is to start putting the side panels back on. And I'm of course most interested to see how it's going to go uh, on this side. So now you basically just reverse engineer the mounting points. Um, I need to remove the screw which I stored there. And so this part goes in and this part in the back. So you just feed them in here together. Like so. Uh, and then you need to press this in so it goes into the plug like that press this in like that it's over all the velcro uh, area so and now we're gonna put the bolt back in here
Uh, next step is to get the seat back in place. Toolbox back in the bike, and the seat goes back. So, that is how you replace the air filter uh, in a Honda CBR650R, and I guess a few other tips um, which you probably won't need to deal with, but that I had to. 